Howdy folks, Jim Ruthas here, and in today's Rank Mall video, we're going to rank Exodus discography. And Exodus is a Bay Area thrash band, a quite legendary band in fact, because they were one of the first bands to ever play thrash metal. And they are still going strong till this day. And the band has been fronted by three different vocalists over the years, Paul Bailoff, Steve Setrosusa, and Rob Dukes. And Gary Holt is the only member of the band that has appeared on all of the records. And he's of course also known for playing the guitars in Slayer. And as a little heads up here, there will be some fierce critique towards some of their albums in this video. But these are my views and I don't feel like holding back, but if you like these records, that's absolutely fine too. I'm just telling it from my perspective here. But if you are an Exodus fan, then make sure to destroy that like button and subscribe so you won't miss out when I rank other thrash bands. And now it's time to rank some Exodus albums. The worst Exodus album is in my opinion Exhibit B, The Human Condition. And this album works well as a frisbee and that's about it. <laughs> no but seriously, I don't like the Rob Dukes era of Exodus. For me, this is not the real Exodus. After Temple of the Damned, I felt like the band started to incorporate a more modern sound. It felt like they were more influenced by modern day metal than the thrash sound that they helped creating back in the day. It would be easy to say that Exodus ain't Exodus without Rick Hunnelt in the band, since there has been a drop of quality of their outputs ever since he left, but I don't think it's that easy. The band just wanted to go in a more modern direction. Whether that was Gary Holt's decision or the band or the management, I don't know. Because this album sounds sterile, mechanical and super modern. And I just can't get into it. So that's why Exhibit B is my number 10. In ninth place we have another atrocious album and it's the atrocity exhibition Exhibit A. And this album is as bad as the title of the album suggests. <laughs> Rob Duke's vocal performance is rather intolerable, I would say. And this is an album that I will probably never listen to again, so let's just forget about the two Exhibit albums and just move on. In 8th place we have, yeah, you guessed it, one of those modern day Exodus albums with Rob Dukes at the microphone. And even if I dislike Rob Dukes as a vocalist, I must point out that it's not really his fault that every album he on sounds like a machine head record. And yeah, I'm talking about Shovel Headed Kill Machine, which is a very silly album title. It's like they sat in their office and thought, what does the kids like these days? Hmm. We could name the album Kill Machine, kinda like Judas Priest's Killing Machine. No, let's make it more edgy. We can name it Shovel Headed Killing Machine. Yay! <laughs> no, but seriously, this album goes straight to the garbage bin. It's just unlistenable, in my opinion. In seventh place, we have Blood In, Blood Out, which was also the title of a great movie from the 90s. And this was the return of Steve Cetrosusa after being away from the band for about 10 years. And uh, it was surely great to see him back in the band, since I didn't like the direction that the band went in during the Rob Dukes era. And uh, there are a few cool riffs on this album, but overall it's one of those albums that I don't really listen to that much anymore. This album is far from great, but it's a step in the right direction after a series of modern or post thrash metal albums, or whatever we wanna call that era. In 6th place we have Force of Habit from 92, which a lot of people rank as one of the worst. And maybe it is, but I prefer the Exodus Ghost Mainstream era before the Exodus Ghost Modern Metal era. And uh, is this a good album? Not really, but it has its moments in the middle of all of those experimental songs. In 5th place we have Tempo of the Damned, which I think is one of the best comeback albums of any thrash band. But I would have loved to see Paul Bailoff on this record, because he was in the band just prior to them recording this album. And Setro might be a better vocalist, but I would have loved to see Paul Bailoff record another album with Exodus. But unfortunately, that never happened. Still, Temp of the Damned is a real strong album, it's nicely produced, and it's filled with the cool tracks like War is My Shepherd, Forward March and Impaler. 
a song that was written back in the pre-Bounded by Blood days. It was even supposed to be on that album, but since the main riff was written by Kirk Kamet, whom left for Metallica, they didn't include that song back then, so it's nice to hear a re-recorded version of that song here. In fourth place, where the impact is imminent, and this album is quite underrated in their catalogue, I would say. You mostly hear about their first three albums and Temple of the Damned when people speak about Exodus. But Impact is Imminent is a forgotten album, and it's not weird like Force of Habit, it's just a solid thrash album. The Lunatic Parade, Objection Overruled, and Thrash Under Pressure are cool thrashers. So fourth place it is for Impact is Imminent. In third place we have Fabulous Disaster, and half of this album is absolutely brilliant. The other half is just cringy. The lyrics are childish and it really annoys me. Like the lyrics for The Toxic Waltz for example, or Cajun Hell, or even Lowrider. And the Lowrider is a cover by the way, and they also covered ACDC's Overdose on this album. Exodus should just do original songs in my opinion, we don't really need no half-assed covers here. Maybe those were pushed by the label though, it's kind of hard to say. So I dislike the silly nature of this album, but I do love some songs from Fabulous Disaster. Songs like The Last Act of Defiance, Like Father Like Son, and Corruption are all brilliant thrashers. And some people hold this album as a masterpiece, but it's just too silly for me. But still I think it's a great record, so Fabulous Disaster is my number 3. In second place we have Pleasures of the Flesh, which was the first album with Cetra on the vocals. And this is my second favorite Exodus album, simply because how good the songs are. Deranged, Parasite, Braindead, Pleasures of the Flesh, Seeds of Hate and Chemical are all solid thrashers. The album ain't as aggressive and over the top as Bounded by Blood, but it's definitely an underrated thrash album. And the best Exodus album is of course Bounded by Blood from 1985. And this album was delayed, it was supposed to be released in 1984. And it's the only Exodus album that I would give a 10 out of 10. Every song on this album is an absolute thrash classic. Bounded by Blood, and then there were None, Metal Command, Piranha, and Strike of the Beast, to name a few. And this album reminded me a bit of Metallica's debut album Kill Em All, even if this one is even more fierce. Paul Bailoff shrieks, growls and barks, it's just amazing stuff. And this is probably my all time favorite thrash record, so it was a given winner. And here we have my full list on display. I liked the first couple of albums and Temple of the Damned was a cool comeback album. But there are some parts of their discography that I really don't like. But now I want to hear your opinions on Exodus discography. Do you agree with me or do you see things differently? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, then smash that like button. And if you're into metal, then I'll suggest that you hit that subscribe button with the notifications turned on. And if you want to support my work, then you can become a Patreon like these gents. Or grab yourself a Ruthless Metal shirt at the Ruthless Metal store. Links can be found down below. And uh, let me know whose discography I should rank next. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.